Good evening, students. Today, I am going to talk about targeted anti-cancer therapies. So far, we have discussed about cytotoxic drugs. So these targeted anti-cancer anti therapies, they are specifically targeted against some molecules present in the cancer cells. So we, we are going to target the uh, specific molecules present on the cancer cells. So these targeted anti-cancer therapies are divided into two. One is monoclonal antibody, another one is small molecule inhibitor. Today, I am going to discuss about monoclonal antibodies, some important drugs in monoclonal antibodies. So first drug I am going to discuss is trastuzumab. So trastuzumab is nothing, it is a monoclonal antibody which acts against HER2 or new gene product. So where it is used, it is used in breast carcinoma, mainly it is used in breast carcinoma. What is the important side effect of this drug? This cardiotoxicity, okay? Remember this. So recently, this trastuzumab is also approved for the condition cancer of the stomach and gastroesophageal junction. Okay, this is about trastuzumab. Now coming to rituximab, rituximab it has a lot of uses. It's a monoclonal antibody which acts against CD20. Okay, so mostly it is used in the condition called non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It also has other uses. I will discuss it in upcoming slide. And Next drug is alamtuzumab. Okay, alamtuzumab it targets CD52. It is used in the condition called B cell CLL. That is chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Now we have three monoclonal antibodies. They are used for the condition called colorectal carcinoma. What are these three drugs? Cetuximab, panitumumab, and bevacizumab. How we can remember this? So make a mnemonic. Punjab cricket code. Okay, so. Punjab for panitumumab, P for panitumumab, cricket, C for cetuximab, O, B for bevacizumab. So these three drugs are used in the condition called colorectal carcinoma. So now we, are, we have just discussed about alamtuzumab. I have told it is used in B cell CLL in targets CD52, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Now comes bevacizumab. It is one of the Punjab cricket board, B for board. So it is used in colorectal carcinoma that you know. So it targets against VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor. It also has other uses. It is also used in renal cell carcinoma, brain tumors, ovarian cancers, non-small cell lung cancer. It is usually, this drug is usually combined with a drug called 5-FU, 5-fluorouracil. Okay, remember this, this is about Vibacizumab. Now comes Brintotumumab. This is a molecular antibody which acts against CD19 and CD3. This is particularly used in the condition called Philadelphia negative B cell ALL, acute lymphocytic leukemia. Philadelphia negative B cell ALL, print out to MOMAP. Now comes Brentoxibab. It acts against CD30. It is particularly used in the condition called Hodgkin's lymphoma as well as anaplastic B cell lymphoma. This is about Brentoxibab. Now comes Cetuximab. I already discussed the three drugs which is used in colorectal carcinoma. That is Punjab, Cricket, Board, CFAR. So it targets epidermal growth factor receptor used in EGFR positive metastatic colorectal carcinoma. It is also used in head and neck carcinomas. So what are the side effects of cetuximab? We have we can get rash, hypomagnesemia, the magnesium concentration, serum concentration will be reduced, and interstitial lung disease. These are the important side effects associated with cetuximab. Now comes Daratumumab. It's a monoclonal antibody. It targets CD38. It is used in multiple myeloma, which is a plasma cell neoplasm. It is a bone, uh, it's a cancer arising from the bone. So, newer drug which also acts against CD30, which is used in multiple myeloma, is isatuximab. So, two drugs, daratumumab, isatuximab, it acts against CD38. So, used in multiple myeloma. Now comes Dinosumab. It's a monoclonal antibody which acts against rank L receptor, rank ligand. Receptor for activated nuclear factor kappa B receptor ligand. Receptor for activated nuclear factor kappa ligand. So on targeting this, it is used in osteoporosis, osteoporosis and giant cell tumor of bone. So Dinosumab is used in osteoporosis and giant cell tumor of bone by targeting rank ligand. Now comes dinotuximab. This dinotuximab, it targets glycolipid GD2. This GD2 is expressed on neuroblastoma cells. The neuroblastoma commonly occurs in the children. So it is used in children with high risk of neuroblastoma. 
Now comes Ilatuzumab. This monoclonal antibody, it targets SLAM F7. So it is used in the condition called multiple myeloma, the bone cancer, the cancer arising from the bone, plus muscle neoplasm. Daratumumab and Isatuximab is also we discussed by targeting CD38. Here, Ilatuzumab is targeting SLAM F7, which is used in multiple myeloma. Now comes Zemtuzumab, Ozogamycin. So they target CD33. They are used in CD33 positive AML, acute myeloid leukemia. If there is CD33 positive AML, we can give Zemtuzumab, Ozogamycin because they target CD33. Now comes Tusitumumab and Ibrutumumab. So these drugs act against CD20. This CD20 is expressed particularly on B cell lymphomas. Okay. So these drugs are used in relapsed B cell neo B cell neoplasms or B cell lymphomas. These drugs are conjugated with radioisotopes. So iodine 131 and yttrium 90. So iodine is conjugated with tusitumumab and yttrium is conjugated with ibrutumumab. So they target CD20. CD20 is expressed on B cell lymphomas. So it is used to treat B cell lymphomas. Now comes epilimumab. They target CTLA4, cytotoxic T lymphocyte associated protein 4. So by targeting this, your T cell will get activated. The T cell will injure your cancer cell. So T cell will destroy the cancer cell. So epilimumab, it targets CTL4. It is used in the condition called malignant melanoma, which, uh, which is the malignant neoplasm arising from the skin. Malignant melanoma. Don't confuse malignant melanoma with multiple myeloma. Both are MM. Okay. So don't confuse with that. Be careful in this. Now comes Nesitu Mumab. It also targets epidermal growth factor receptor. It is used in the condition called squamous non-small cell lung carcinoma. So squamous cell carcinoma of the lung is used Nesitu Mumab. So squamous non-small cell lung carcinoma. Now comes nivolumab. This monoclonal antibody it targets programmed cell death receptor one. Okay, programmed cell death receptor one. So on targeting this, the same thing happened. The T cells will get activated and it will destroy your cancer cells. The T cell will get activated and destroy your cancer cells on targeting PD1. So by targeting this PD1, it will inhibit the interaction of the programmed death cell receptor with, with its ligands, which is present on the T cells. So your T cell will get activated and it will kill the cancer cells. So where this neurobab is used, it is used in non-small cell lung cancer and metastatic melanoma. So lungs and skin cancer, that is melanoma. The cancer is the melanocytes in the skin, okay? So nivolumab is used in non-small cell lung cancer and metastatic melanoma, it targets PD-1. Now comes obinutuzumab. It targets C20. I already told you C20 is already expressed lot in B cell neoplasm. So it is used in B cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So along with that, it is also used in chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL. Usually we used to combine obinutuzumab with chlorambucil. Okay, chlorambucil is an alkylating agent. Now comes ofatumumab. It also targets CD20, but it is only used in CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Opatumumab is used in chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Now comes Panichumumab. Remember that uh, Punjab Cricket Board, it is used in three drugs used in colorectal carcinoma. It is used in colorectal carcinoma. So Punjab, P4 Panichumumab, it targets EGFR. So it is used in colorectal carcinoma. It can cause rash as side effect. Now come Pembrolizumab. It also targets PD-1, program cell disease. Program cell death receptor 1. It is used in the condition called melanoma, malignant or metastatic melanoma, the cancer arising from the melanocytes. It is also used in non small cell lung cancer. Okay. Tembrolizumab. Now comes Pertuzumab. It targets HER2 receptors. Like your trash 2 zumab, it is Pertuzumab. Both are targeting HER2 receptors. So it is uh, used in breast cancer. Trash zumab is also used in breast cancer. Pertuzumab is also used in breast cancer. So what it does do in mechanism of action, it inhibits the dimerization of the HER2 receptor, the other HER receptor. So Pertuzumab is used in breast cancer. Now come Ramu Sirumab. It targets BG, 
vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2 so it is used in the condition called gastroesophageal carcinoma as well as non small cell lung cancer it also acts as angiogenesis inhibitor so ramucerumab it targets bg vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2 begfr2 it is used in gastroesophageal carcinoma as well as non small cell lung carcinoma now comes rituximab already told you it is used against cd20 it is particularly used in non hodgkin lymphoma we told other uses remember as reliance avoid 2e and fill remaining uh, letters so r for rheumatoid arthritis it is autoimmune disease l for lupus sle systemic lupus erythematosus i for itp immune thrombocytopenia purpura and a for autoimmune hemolytic anemia n for non hodgkin's lymphoma and c for cll so reliance cut the 2e fill the remaining letters r for rheumatoid arthritis l for lupus systemic lupus erythematosus I for ITP, immune thrombocytopenia purpura, A for autoimmune hemolytic anemia, and N for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, C for CLL. Avoid two E's. So this is, these are the uses of rituximab in target CD20. So we have studied about vivacizumab. What are the important safety concerns with vivacizumab? It can cause hypertension. It can cause thromboembolism. It can uh, impair wound healing. It can cause gastrointestinal perforations. So these are the more four important side effects associated with bevacizumab: hypertension, thromboembolism, wound healing, impaired wound healing, and gastrointestinal perforations. Now, last we have adotanzumab mertansin. This tanzumab is combined with mertansin. You know, tanzumab is a monoclonal antibody against HER2. It is used in breast cancer. So it is all this combination is also used in metastatic breast cancer breast cancer, which is HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer. This methacin is nothing but it is a microtubule inhibitor. Okay, it inhibits the microtubule in your uh, cancer cells. So, aerotransfer methacin is used for breast cancer, HER2 positive breast cancer. That's all for the class today and thank you for your kind attention.